G'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. Well, I uh, just want to spend today um, having a bit of a chat about some thoughts and ideas for what I want to do for the next build. But before I do, I want to make, I guess, a bit of a, a public announcement. Um, like I've said many times before, um, I am not an expert in any way, shape or form uh, in RF design. Um, I don't profess to be, uh, and I don't want to come across that way. Um, all of these videos uh, are not... Uh, not tutorials, they're not how to do something, they're very much just a video diary of what I'm getting up to. Um, it's just a way of, I guess, documenting it. Um, and the whole thrust, and the only reason why I'm putting these up, um, is to encourage others to give it a go. Uh, and I've said it, um, I'm not an expert, uh, and if I can do it, then certainly others can. Now, with that in mind, um, what I want to do for this build um, is to build a, a very simple uh, single sideband uh, transceiver um, and I'm very conscious that it's been mentioned before that I've used I guess I don't use the word exotic but potentially hard to come by uh, in, in some respects expensive components um, so in this particular case I want to try and sort of find that happy medium of components that are, are readily available, easily obtainable um, uh, to, to, I guess to assist um, someone to, to basically give it a go. So I think that's probably all I'm going to say that for that for a start. Um, this particular build will not suit everybody um, in terms of being someone's cup of tea. Um, I know there's lots of really good ideas coming in for future builds. Um, SDR radios for example um, there's a couple of different things I want to try with that. Um, one is to, and I, I'll talk about this now anyway, because this video is about thoughts and ideas. Uh, in terms of the SDR, will be, I, I do want to look at that Tensi again, um, and maybe, in fact, will build on what I've done in the past in terms of additional filters, um, relook at the waterfall, di uh, waterfall display uh, in the spectrum, for example. Um, the previous SDR build using the Tensi was was on purpose uh, a very simple phasing approach uh, again in the spirit of the videos to to let others sort of potentially give it a go uh, themselves but that's a new an option to build up on that another one which would be certainly quite a steep learning experience for me would be looking into the feasibility um, here in the shack of direct uh, digital conversion um, as well as getting into things like uh, feelable um, FPGAs for example, um, you know, that would be like I say quite a steep learning curve and, and I need to put some thought into that. Uh, there's lots of other ideas still sitting on my to-do list which um, I guess it's sort of a happy medium between meeting people's expectations but also doing things that I enjoy and things that I sort of want and need around the shack. For example audible SWR meters, uh, 6 meter rigs, um, stepped attenuators. Um, I know there's a couple of times come up the um, desire for an automatic antenna tuning unit using servos um, to to adjust the capacitors. Um, I guess there's the other option which is quite common to have relays switching in and out inductance and capacitance but suffice to say uh, an automatic antenna tuner. Um, you know I, I will get to that at some point in time. I, I've got a nice manual tuner that I, I currently use so it's not one of those things that I actually need, but it will be something that will bubble to the surface. Anyway, um, so I do want to acknowledge that there are a number of really good ideas coming in, and I certainly welcome those. But in the same breath, um, please just bear with me that I can't do it all at once. Um, and at the end of the day, this is really sort of, I guess, my hobby. Um, and it's, you know, I need to do something which, which I get enjoyment out of and, and satisfaction. So um, I guess, uh, you know, please take that on board. Right, so in terms of where I want to, and what I want to try and achieve with this build, um, as I mentioned, I want to try and use simple and easy to, um, to obtain components. So the, I think the best thing I can do is just sort of go through what I'm thinking and then uh, essentially go from there. So as you can see there, um, the topology is going to be a, um, a single conversion um, super heterodyne receiver. Um, won't be direct conversion, it'll be, it'll be a super het. Even though I've drawn it like this, in reality it'll actually be in line with what I've done uh, where 
I've got a relay that switches those two mixes to either be um, mixers or product detectors um, or carrier or, uh, carrier mixes uh, and the like. So in other words, uh, I get to share those between the transmit and the receive. So I'm always getting that one um, loop of RF going through the IF chain. Um, I, I, I explained it very poorly, but suffice to say that's the topology that I will be building um, for this particular radio. But for the sake of explaining what I'm thinking, I'll, I'll draw it in the, uh, the more traditional approach. So um, there will be a bandpass filter at the front. Um, I, I think just for the sake of simplicity, um, this will be an 80 meter rig, and there's no reason why this will not work on uh, any other band. Um, I may even consider for this filter at the beginning here to have it pluggable, so I can plug in and plug out. Um, maybe either using RCA plugs or potentially just those little header pins uh, but have the ability to, to, to switch between bands. Uh, I could get fancy there and have say diode switching or, or um, uh, you know, some kind of um, relays or the like but again in the, in, the, in the spirit of trying to keep this as simple and as easy as possible um, I'll just go with a, um, I think I'll go with a, a pluggable arrangement for that. Um, in terms, uh, after that, uh, I think I will have some kind of rotary switch there that will allow it to be either straight through, in other words, um, no attenuation or amplification. There will be an attenuator of some sort, just be a simple Pi network. Um, I haven't tried, worked out at this point in time if there will be uh, a couple of attenuators, you know, 1 dB, 3, 10 dB, I'm not sure. Um, but that will be a, uh, an option there. And... Um, the idea of an amplifier here I will put in, noting that the solid state design for the radio amateur suggests that for frequencies uh, under 21 megahertz, um, there's actually no need for that particular amplifier there. Noting that we are trying to obtain, certainly from this point onwards, um, 100 odd dB of gain uh, to, make a, um, to make a usable receiver. But that will be an option, I'm sure that I'll, I'll build onto it. Um, right, so that brings us to the mixers. So in the past, as you know, I have used things like this, the SBL1 or the ADE-1 or those sorts of commercial uh, double balanced mixers. Um, I'm going to try not to use that in this particular case. So the option then is to uh, maybe go for dual gate MOSFETs, uh, but those are becoming increasingly more difficult to find. Um, I could go for uh, cascaded uh, J310 JFETs, uh, but it has been, but as has been pointed out several times in previous videos, that they are also hard to come by. So, with that in mind, what I'll probably do is emulate um, the double balance mixer uh, in discrete form. So, here goes on. We built uh, a while back. Uh, it uses the FT37-43. Now, the, the, these will be used throughout the radio. Um, there's really no getting away from having inductors and the odd transformer um, through the radio, and I'll mention L matching later on. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, these are actually quite easy to get hold of. So, uh, unlike, say, the Bitex range, which uh, didn't use toroids, um, but used uh, other forms of transformer, um, I won't be going that route. I will be using FT37-43s. So, um, in the past, what I have used um, is just normal silicon um, low signal diodes here, the 4148. Um, what I'm going to do in this particular case is I'm going to use um, shot key diodes. I'm going to use the, the uh, 1N5711, which is, um, my understanding, is quite readily available. Um, I've got a packet of, what's that, um, 4, 8, 12, I suppose, um, here, 10. Um, what I have gone ahead from a local supply here in New Zealand, I've ordered uh, another 50 of these. Um, they're quite inexpensive. Uh, Ford voltage drop is 0.4 volts. Um, and I'm, what I'm planning to do is take a similar approach as here, where I use a multimeter to look at the Ford voltage drop of uh, a whole range of um, these devices here, and then select four which uh, within QE or as close as possible to each other. Um, and I'll look to build two of those, um, and hopefully we'll get a reasonably good match. Probably look to use a 100 ohm trim pot there just to, to null out 
um, the, the balance modulator whereas of course in this particular case here there's the ability of having laser trimming which, which I don't have. So that is the approach um, that I'll probably, in fact I will be looking to use uh, in this particular rig um, and we'll see hopefully that'll work uh, reasonably well. Uh, in terms of the IF amplifier Again, in the spirit of keeping things simple, uh, it would be the standard um, 2M3904 based amplifiers. Um, I mentioned before L matching, so what I may look to use um, for the I.O. of those uh, two IF amps here will be an L match um, for the mixers and for the crystal filter. Um, and if I find that's not working very well, then I'll look to resort back to uh, using um, a, a traditional transformer. Yeah, using the FT37-43. So the crystal filter, so um, again, been many comments before that um, I've got a, uh, a quite well stocked uh, junk bin using old radios which um, I use the term beyond economical repair which I've harvested to get all sorts of components out of um, some of which are these uh, crystal filters here. So in the spirit of acknowledging that these are, are hard to come by uh, and as has been mentioned in previous videos um, I'm going to look to use um, some very cheap uh, uh, crystals that I got from uh, if I recall AliExpress um, this is the bag which I've already sort of pre-sorted to try and get uh, for roughly the same um, value in terms of frequency and with their overall um, separation between there uh, and, and the balance here so two things I want to try A um, I'm going to look at just building a, a cone filter. Um, again, this I'm not going to take the, pur uh, the purest approach when I get to it and look to measure the, um, the characteristics of the uh, crystals in terms of their capacitance, inductance, and series resistance and the like. Um, I'm going to use the KISS approach um, and just look to empirically just add those equal valued capacitors uh, across the um, crystals to see what effect it has. And we'll look at that using the, uh, the VNA just to, to plot the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the pass band. So um, I'm going to do it two different ways. A, I'm going to use this set here, uh, which are notionally sort of matched or close to, value, close to each other in value. And then I'm just going to grab um, some random ones out of here. Uh, and see what the difference is. So, in other words, the approach is, is not to use a commercial filter, but to uh, very simply, and I acknowledge that it's not going to be per the book, um, make a, a crystal-based um, or homebrew crystal filter for that uh, filter there. Um, yeah, and we'll talk about that when we come to it. Now, the product detector on the receive, we've already spoken about. Uh, it'll be the same as the, the incoming mixer there. Now for the amplifier, the audio amplifier, uh, again, as I've done in the past, and it works for me, so why not do it again? I'm going to use the combination of a, um, an NE5534, this is a, a low noise op amp, uh, feeding into an LM380, which is a, a 2.5 watt uh, audio amplifier chip here. Works well, um, and it's a nice simple combination, very few additional components required to get a good low noise um, and, and, and relatively powerful uh, audio amplifier. So that's what I'll be using for that. Uh, in terms of the uh, the the mixer or the the, the um, local oscillator here in the BFO, um, I am going to stick with the uh, the SI5351. Um, you can buy. Oh, my apologies. Um, you can buy that. Uh, oh, gosh, did it again. Silly me. Sorry. You can buy that um, online from places like AliExpress for you know New Zealand um, three dollars. So as far as I'm concerned, that is uh, inexpensive. Um, they are readily available and they just work. So there's just really, as far as I'm concerned, there's just really no need to to look to build uh, discrete you know, a Colpitts or a Hartley-based oscillator uh, and have the drift issues where you can you know, just go sort of digital and produce those um, outputs on um, the various clocks there to, to feed into those mixes. So I, I will stick with that. Um, therefore I need some kind of microcontroller to talk to those. Again, um, I'll use uh, one of these two. Um, probably go for the smaller one just to, to keep things smaller. Uh, the Arduino here. 
yeah, th these boards are again very inexpensive. Um, you know, in the, in the region of four dollars fifty uh, here in New Zealand. So, as um, far as I'm concerned, that that's a nice, easy um, way to go, and I'll be looking to do that. Um, so, yeah. So, in terms of um, input output into the the Arduino uh, rotary encoders, so traditionally I have been using. Uh, this rotary encoder here works perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it. It has the advantage of a little push switch there that can be used uh, to do various things. Um, I was very graciously given, and I'm, I'm very, um, you know, thank you very, very much. I was given some of these, uh, I guess, the, the commercial grade rotary encoders. Um, absolutely smooth as butter, uh, and quite excited to use uh, one of these in the project. But uh, again, absolutely no reason why you couldn't use one of these. It's just I'm going to take the opportunity uh, to use this uh, in this particular project and marry it up with a nice big, um, a nice big button there to to um, or knob, I should say, uh, for that particular rotary encoder. Now the display, um, two two routes there. Um, I was thinking about going for a, a touchscreen option with a nice big display, um, but. I took a long hard th think about it and I thought well no that's not really in keeping with trying to keep this you know cheaper than has been in the past you know more readily available etc etc uh, and the cost difference between say a, a 16 by 2 here versus this is huge um, you know this is in a region of sort of two or three dollars uh, even with the the IC2 backplane on there um, versus you know in the region of here in some cases it's 30 odd dollars for a three and a half inch screen uh, and more. So um, I am not going to use this. I am going to, and I apologize again, use this simple display here. But um, I think that's in keeping with, with where we want to go, or where I want to go, more the point. Um, in terms of relays, uh, I'm again, I'm not going to use um, something more, uh, let me just grab one out of the box here, say one of these, which is, you know, a, um, a relay you would typically see out of a commercial rig, uh, I'm going to use these or something similar. Just a, a stock standard relay. Um, in fact, that just reminds me seeing that 12 volts there. Uh, relays, uh, just stock standard normal relays. So suffice to say. Now, that 12 volts reminds me that um, for this particular build, um, I'm going to use this. It's an old laptop, um, a laptop, uh, I think it's a laptop. Um, power supply, as you can see there, it's, uh, this output is 24 volts at 2 amps, um, so 48 watts of energy I could feed in from a DC point of view. Um, why I want to do that is that 24 volts there will allow me to have a little bit more um, headroom or oomph on the, the power amplifier, because um, I will be, again, I should stop saying that, but I won't be using um, some proper RF um, transistors for that. It'll probably be the BD139 uh, and rather than sort of giving that 13.8 volts um, I'll give it 24 volts. Well that's what I'm going to look at doing um, just to make life a little bit easier squeezing out that sort of 5 odd watts. Um, we'll see. But it's, that's what I'm thinking anyway. So in terms of the microphone um, uh, I, I'm just going to use a, a little electret here. Uh, nice and simple yeah, really available. Tons of them around. So we'll use that uh, in some form of mic amp, uh, not sure yet if that's going to be a, um, a discrete uh, 2N3904 um, or say um, reuse the, the NE5534, we'll see there, um, but that's what we're going to do. Um, magic happens in here of course, going back through the, the mixes and stepping it up to our desired transmit frequency uh, and then as I just mentioned that power amplifier will probably be some form and I haven't got that far thinking yet, just using um, say the BD139 and then into a stock standard just to clean up the signal, uh, low pass filter, uh, probably using um, T68s or, or, or one of those um, type toroids, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, doke. well that's going on 19 minutes, so I've spoken for way longer than I probably wanted to, but um, I just sort of wanted to reiterate you know, that I'm no expert in this. Um, this is just me playing around, um, taking uh, non-conventional approaches to a whole raft of different things, and I acknowledge that um, it's not necessarily everybody's uh, cup of tea, 
but um, hopefully by by going through this and I'll, and I'll do it again in parts um, it will sort of show others that um, you know give it a go just give homebrew a go and see how you get on okay well I'm going to say 73 and start to think about where I'm going to start um, the dyes haven't turned up yet so I might start with the crystal filter uh, and we'll go from there okay 73 all and we'll see you uh, next time cheers all